Hello everyone, welcome to the last episode of our six part series focusing on all the wonderful areas that make up this beautiful state of Arizona. I'm Chris Catanzariti from Link Tourism, one of Australia's leading sales, marketing and PR agencies and we proudly represent the Arizona Office of Tourism. Thanks for joining us in discovering the wonders of Arizona throughout the series and in this episode we're going to focus on all things culinary. Where is Arizona? Situated in the southwest United States, Arizona is easily accessible for Aussies and Kiwis with only one stop from the main gateways of Los Angeles, San Francisco or Dallas. A short flight or car rental will see your clients exploring this great state in no time. There's five regions in Arizona, as seen outlined here, and I'm going to take you on a quick journey of all of these regions so you can get a better understanding of how much there truly is to explore. If I were to detail everything, this webinar would go for about three weeks. So if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see uh, or get more information on, please send me an email and I'll share my details on the final slide. Arizona has a wide range of gastronomy experiences to offer from the wine regions to farm to table concepts and award winning chefs and restaurants. Let's explore what's on offer and I hope you're not feeling too hungry because I fear you will be by the end of this. Arizona has a long history of agriculture. These days, the state is rapidly becoming known for its culinary excellence. Thanks to James Beard and Forbes five-star award-winning restaurants, farm-to-table fare, American Indian specialties, and of course, authentic Southwestern cuisine. From sophisticated ambiance to rustic down-home surroundings to romantic candlelit dining, you'll find something to suit your tastes in Arizona. In addition to the diverse culinary scene, Arizona is rapidly becoming recognized for its award-winning wines and delicious craft beers. Let's discover some of the more recent culinary accolades that have been awarded in the great state of Arizona. The James Beard Foundation's Restaurant and Chef Awards honor members of the American food, beverage, and hospitality industries who show exceptional talent and creativity in their craft and commendable leadership among the, amongst their colleagues and peers. 2022 saw the James Beard Award for Outstanding Restaurateur awarded to Chris Bianco. A few years ago, much to the shock of New Yorkers and Chicagoans, the readers of Travel and Leisure magazine picked Phoenix as the best city for pizza in America. As the story goes, pizzaiolo Chris Bianco, also a pizza maker to the stars, raised the bar so high in Phoenix, it lifted the quality of pizza across the whole city, turning it into a place of pilgrimage for pizza lovers. Another 2022 winner of the James Beard Award for Outstanding Baker is Don Guerra at Barrio Bread. Barrio Bread is dedicated to exceptional quality artisan bread created with century-old baking techniques and locally grown heritage grains. Four Arizona chefs and restaurants were named finalists in the 2022 James Beard Awards and 10 were named in 2019. Arizona is the place for food. In addition to James Beard Award winners and nominees, Kai, meaning seed in the Pima language, is located within the Sheraton Grand Wild Horse Pass Resort in Chandler. The luxury restaurant is now the only AAA Five Diamond Forbes Five Star Restaurant in Arizona. The menu incorporates Native American techniques from the Pima and Maricopa tribes and uses locally farmed ingredients from the Gila River Indian community to create unforgettable dishes. Let's talk about Tucson, a designated UNESCO city of gastronomy. In 2015, Tucson, Arizona became the first American city to become part of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network for Gastronomy, honoring Southern Arizona's food traditions and culinary innovation. Tucson has the longest agricultural history of any city in the United States. The culinary heritage is a tapestry of Mexican and Native American traditions. It has a 4,000 year tradition of vineyards, orchards, and livestock ranching that have forged the wide array of local heritage foods. Tucson focuses heavily on innovative programs and regulations for food security and sustainable local food production and distribution. Some of Tucson's better known restaurants have rich histories and strong historical links to the foods and the lands that they come from. Tucson is home to the nation's oldest Mexican restaurant in continuous operation by the same family, El Charo Cafe. Established in 1922, El Charo Cafe features traditional Northern Mexico Sonoran style and innovative Tucson style Mexican food and is the inventor of the chimichanga. Boca Tacos has made a name for themselves thanks to often uniquely flavored tacos made using traditional Mexican methods. Think python on corn tortillas. Mission Gardens, immediately west of downtown Tucson, in Mission Garden, a four acre plot of land organizers call a living edible museum. It pays homage to the area's diverse cultural heritage and long-standing agricultural history. 
A recreated garden that once existed beyond the walls of Mission San Agustin now features a Hohokam agave plantation, field crops that Spanish explorers brought with them from the old world and desert adapted species of squash, bean and corn used by the Otham peoples. The property hosts cooking classes, gardening demonstration, plant sales and agricultural festivals. Tucson is home to the best Mexican food north of the border. Along 12th Avenue on the south side of town, visitors can find authentic Mexican food, typically Sonoran style, at small mom and pop restaurants where frequently Spanish is the only language spoken. For something uniquely different, let's try Whiskey del Bac. Barley is malted over mesquite instead of peat as they do in Scotland for a single malt whiskey with a flavor distinctive to the American Southwest. This is also now a James Beard Award semi-finalist. Whiskey del Bac present, represents true American craft and independence. The Fresh Foodie Trail. Serving as a culinary gateway to Phoenix and Scottsdale, the neighboring farms in and around Mesa are providing a bounty of seasonal goods for visitors to enjoy year round. Citrus in January, peaches in May, olives in October. There's something for everyone. Detours Touring Company provides visitors alternative transportation options with day tours on Tuesdays and Saturdays for those wanting to leave the driving and research to the experts. Agritopia is a community on the edge of the rural urban interface. It's an urban farm designed to flourish in that setting. Instead of a huge field of one crop, you'll find a patchwork of numerous specialty crops. New York Times named Agritopia the leading, leading agri-hood in the country in 2014. Barnone, Arizona, located next to Agritopia, is a community for skilled craftsmen to make and sell their handcraft goods. There, visitors will find 12 of Arizona's best makers, ranging from woodworkers to experimental winemakers, restaurateurs, and more. And just for your reference, the PB&J brisket sandwich pictured in the middle here from Jalapeno Bucks is to die for. Safford Salsa Trail and Salsa Fest. In the small towns along the US Highway 70, roughly three hours east of Phoenix, you'll find Arizona has an entire route dedicated to salsa. The Salsa Trail, which connects several Mexican restaurants, taco shops, and a tortilla factory, is located in the southern, southeastern section of the state throughout Graham, Greenlee, and Cochise counties. Pick up a trail map at any of the 16 stops or visit the Safford Visitor Center. For those who prefer a more compact experience, head to Safford in September for the annual Salsa Fest, where you'll be able to taste the offerings from the Salsa Trail restaurants all in one place. For the seasoned or the brave, Friday night at the Taste of the Salsa Trail event showcases the spicy handiwork. You have been warned. Salsa Fest also includes a salsa eating contest, a jalapeno eating contest, chihuahua races, a car show, a kid zone, live entertainment, cooking demonstrations, and up to 80 vendors. Salsa is serious business in Arizona. Nine foods you need to eat whilst in Arizona. Whether it's a dish whose origin story is rooted in Arizona soil or an indigenous ingredient not found anywhere else in the country, these nine foods represent the diversity of the state's people and its history. Consider this your official foodie to-do list. Number one is fry bread. Fry bread dates to 1864 when the Navajo were forced to make the Long Walk, a 300 mile deportation from Arizona to a reservation in New Mexico. With limited supplies, the Navajo combined flour, water, salt, and baking powder to make dough and then fried it in lard. Today, the dish has since been adapted by other tribes and the fluffy bread is usually topped with beans, meat, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, or sour cream, or it's used as a shell for tacos. Number two is the chimichanga, also known as a chimmy. The chimichanga is deep fried, large burrito served with scoops of sour cream and guacamole. Legend has it that in the early 1920s in Tucson, El Charo Cafe founder Monica Flynn invented the chimichanga, or the thingamajig, when a burrito fell into the deep fryer she was using. If you want a hint, ask for a chimmy to be served enchilada style and have it smothered with red enchilada sauce and cheese. Number three is Route 66 beer. You can find it at Mother Road Brewing in Flagstaff. Toaster brew dedicated to the legendary Route 66 in Flagstaff. Mother Road Brewing cites the route's adventurousness and innovative spirit as inspiration for their lineup of road trip themed beers. The brewery's Flagstaff tap room is, of course, located right on the Mother Road. Number four is mesquite flour. Made from the dried ground pods of mesquite trees, this American Indian dietary staple has a sweet, slightly nutty flavor. It's often considered a superfood and Arizona chefs like to experiment with it, frequently adding the flour to bread, pizza, dough, pancakes, muffins, and other baked goods. For a sweet experiment with the mesquite flour, try a mesquite chocolate chip cookie from the Arizona Baking Company. Number five is medjool dates. You'll find them in Martha's Gardens in Yuma. 
Turns out Western Arizona is also America's lettuce capital, producing 90% of winter greens in the US. And it's a grower's haven for medjool date groves, nearly 7 million kilos annually to be exact. Try the tasty, naturally sweet fruit in everything from shakes to ice cream at Martha's Garden Date Farm, a family-run operation that also hosts farm tours from November to April. Number six is the Sonoran Hot Dog. You'll find it at El Guero Canelo and BK Carne Asada and hot dogs both in Tucson. The Sonora Hot Dog is to the southwest what deep dish pasta, uh, pizza is to Chicago an iconic food that both tourists and locals gravitate to. Instead of a traditional bun, a split top roll called a bolillo cradles the hot dog, which is blanketed in bacon and piled with pinto beans, jalapenos, onions, tomatoes, mayonnaise, and other condiments. Number seven is the cheese crisp. You can fire at, find it at Casa Reynoso in Tempe. Think of a cheese crisp as an open-faced quesadilla. It all starts with a flour tortilla stretched out onto a pizza pan, brushed with butter and then toasted in the oven for a few minutes. Once it's lightly crisped and starting to curl at the edges, the tortilla gets layered with cheese and sometimes green chilies. Then it goes back in the oven to melt the cheese. It's cut into slices again like a pizza and served. Prickly pear and margarita comes in at number eight. You can find it at the Javelina Cantina in Sedona. The Sonoran Desert covers central and southern Arizona, as well as northern Mexico, and its rich ecosystem includes dozens of varieties of cactus. Among these is the prickly pear, or nopal. The flat pads of this spiny plant bloom an edible fruit, which is foraged and then made into prickly pear jams, jellies, and syrups. The latter is mixed with tequila for a bright, flavorful twist on a traditional margarita. And number nine, pie. You'll find it at Rock Springs Cafe in Black Canyon City. Okay. Pretty much every American town from coast to coast serves up a good slice of pie, the sugary kind, not pizza. So while the pie at Rock Springs Cafe isn't an only in Arizona dish, it earns a place on the list for being, well, perfect. This is the kind of pie that grandma set to cool on the windowsill with thick shortening crust, lattice tops and rich goopy fillings. It's not an Arizona road trip without stopping by for a slice. Wine, wine, wine. Arizona has three main growing regions with approximately 120 wineries and tasting rooms across the state. In Arizona's high deserts, three major grape growing regions have taken root, the Senoida, the Wilcox, and the Verde Valley. Touring Arizona's wineries is an excellent opportunity to get outside, sip fabulous wine, and admire the stunning vistas. Specific wine trails, the Senoida, the Verde Valley, and Wilcox wine trails, Guide wine lovers around each of the regions, offering a first-hand experience with Arizona's wine country through the online-based Arizona Wine Trail Passport. You might even win some prizes as you sip your way around the state. The Verde Valley, located in the Red Rock countryside and lush canyons of northern Arizona, the Verde Valley region produces award-winning Arizona wines. Elevation, volcanic soil, hot days and cool nights make this region ideal for producing grapes with thicker skins, deeper colors and more flavor. Combine the fun of a float trip down the Verde River to the confluence of Oak Creek and the Verde River on a ducky kayak water to wine trip complete with wine tastings of award-winning wines of the Alcantara in their fabulous Tuscan-style vineyard. For those with a deeper interest in their wine, the Southwest Wine Center at Yavapi College offers a comprehensive vine to the bottle education with a fully operational tasting room on site showcasing the student-led production. The Sonoida region is Arizona's first American viticultural area. The area was designated an AVA for its similarities to uh, the regions in Italy known for its super Tuscans. With an elevation averaging 1500 meters, the unique geographical location, climate and soil ca characteristics of the Sonoida AVA produce award-winning Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec, Merlot and more. With a dozen tasting rooms throughout the region, the vineyards and wineries of the Sonoida AVA invite you to discover a new taste of Arizona. Cochise County, Wilcox, is located in the southeast corner of the state and high above the desert terrain and heat. The area is surrounded by the Dragoons, Chiricahua, and Dos Cabezas mountain ranges. Elevated above 1300 meters and a healthy annual rainfall, it is here that 74% of Arizona's wine grapes are harvested. With several world-class tasting rooms, there are plenty of places to find your next favorite. Craft Beer City Flagstaff. 
Arizona has over 50 craft breweries throughout the state, and in 2018, the Arizona governor recognized Flagstaff as a leading craft beer city. It's home to nine craft breweries providing world-class brews, and the Flagstaff Grand Canyon region is the craft beer hub of the Southwest. Visit all nine and you can pick up a commemorative glass to take home with you. The This Is A Place series interviews Arizona chefs, servers, So that's it for this webinar and our series of webinars on Arizona. We also have a beautiful downloadable destination guide on the Arizona agent training page of the Link Tourism website. And we always recommend you visit the USA Discovery program and obtain your Arizona badge. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching all that Arizona has to offer.